in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed we give you all the praise we give you all the glory can you lift your hands and honor him you deserve all praise we bless you for who you are we bless you for that which you have done hallelujah in one minute i just like you to say father thank you thank you for your love thank you for your grace Thank you for that which you have done in my life. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for bringing beauty and glory out of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Cry for revelation tonight. It's a communion service. Lord, give me understanding. Give me revelation. We open ourselves to the influence of the spirit of revelation and understanding that we may comprehend with all the saints the length, the breadth, the height, the depth of the love of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming around. Tonight is a very powerful night. It's a communion service. And I want you to be very, very sensitive. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I appreciate everyone. Please permit me to appreciate two great people. I'm Sin Tokumbo. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you, sir. And Pastor Jakes and his lovely wife. Let's honor him. Thank you so much. Every other person, I love you. God bless you. Walk up to three people. Tell them it's Good Friday. Prophesy every bad thing out of their life this night. It's Good Friday. In the name of Jesus, it's Good Friday. Hallelujah. Please be seated. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We thank God for the privilege that he has given us to share on this night and I kept thinking truly speaking and trusting God for grace that we will understand the significance of this all over the world um, this day is being celebrated some ignorantly some with understanding some emotionally but the most important thing is that we are taking our time to acknowledge Jesus and I just thought to share a few things um, with us that I believe will bless us and then prepare us for the communion. The first thing I want to talk about is eternal life. I just want to talk about a few things tonight. Um, more like a charge to build and prepare our hearts. The reality of eternal life. The Bible says this is the testimony the record that god has given us eternal life write this down the word eternal life um, is not a very accurate communication but um, it was the best that the translators could do because the word eternal is not a very good rendition everyone has eternal life everyone has everlasting life are we together now everyone created by God doesn't matter whether we fell from whatever the fact that we came from him satisfies the condition to have eternal life 
That's why when evangelists preach, they don't say, will you spend eternity? The question is location, not the possibility. Everyone will spend eternal life. The idea of death as we know is not cessation from living. It's the translation from one dimension of existence to another. And that translation comes with certain possibilities. If you are with God, then it's called life everlasting. If you are apart from him, then it is called death. But that does not mean you will not live again. Are we together? The idea of what we know to be everlasting life is from the Greek word zoe. Please, I want us to understand. Very simple exposition, but will hold the key to our victory. Eternal life is a kind, is a quality. The idea is not another life. The idea is an all-surpassing life in quality. Like you go to buy stuff in the market and they tell you, this one is fake or generally for everyone. And then they take you into another room and they say there is another one. If you have the money, they can bring it down. So eternal life is not one of the many lives. This is what you need to understand. Eternal life is a quality of life that has sustained within it certain possibilities that only in Christ would they manifest. Being in Christ is the secret to activating that life is a life pregnant with possibilities and the nature of that life is such that the possessor of it should be like god are we together so whoever by any means can have access to that life there is an implication that that life should cause in you it should begin to produce certain effects that reflect god if by any means a plant has that life that plant will start behaving like god are we together if by any means a handkerchief possesses that life that handkerchief will begin to behave like god enshrined in that life is capacity to release all the multifaceted possibilities that are in god it is god's own life it's not an inferior type so when the bible says this is the record that god out of his benevolence has given us zoe a class and a kind of life then the bible says that that life is in his son so the condition to possess that life is that you must accept the son outside of jesus there is no possibility of sustaining such a life now there are other kinds of lives that you can access you can access a life assisted by the realm of the spirit it may not be eternal life. Are we together now? I can go to a native doctor to program a mystery in a charm and aid me to live a life that is higher than the normal human life. So I will be able to demonstrate possibilities that may not be affordable to the natural man, but it still is not eternal life. So we're not talking of any life that is above the human life. There are many kinds and quality of lives and living that are above the human life but are not God's life are we together when you meet a rich man although it's all human life because of the quality of what he or she eats and the children their health and the possibilities that come with the kind of life would be far different from someone who eats once a week once in two days are we together now when you meet someone who um, has had access to certain drugs that can aid vitality, you would find that whether they are supplements or whatever it is, there is an advantage that those provisions create to such a person that will reflect in the quality of his life from another. So when Jesus is talking about eternal life, it's not a cater of lives and then his own is the highest. No, no. Eternal life is a class of life incontestable and incomparable with any other. It's a class of life that reflects who God is. He programmed all the possibilities in him like a software and encapsulated it in that life. So that whoever receives that life receives potentials, potentials 
notice my choice of words, receives the potentials to reflect all that are in Christ and all the possibilities that are enshrined in the person. Now, many Christians come to give their lives to Christ. We come out for an altar call. We recite all kinds of things like many will be doing shortly. But very few people, Pastor Jakes, really understand that kind of life. Are we together? And not understanding what we have received will shortchange us. And for many people, their idea of eternal life is we only receive an escape from hell, which will be useful one day. So for now, let's keep it and go back to our normal life. At death, it becomes activated. That is the idea that many people have about what we call eternal life. So they say, are you born again? They say, yes. What they mean is, I got that thing that saves me from hell, but it's somewhere hidden. I will keep living my defeated life. And then if for any reason death comes, is the trigger. I bring it out as an escape. Are we together now? The Bible says, whatsoever is born of God. The word born of God is, if it is God that introduced the seed that gave birth to it, has in it, it says, overcomes the world. Not because of the possessor, but because of what is inside the possessor of that life. Whatsoever is born of God, has capacity to overcome the world. And it says, this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. That's something I'll be discussing shortly. So eternal life is not life after death. Eternal life is God's life that grants a man ascendance to release the possibilities of God here and now. Are we together? It is important that we understand this. It will reflect in the quality of your life and it will reflect in everything. The moment I give my life to Christ, Brothers and sisters, the Bible says, listen to me carefully. It says that I have been called as a result of that initiation out of every tribe, out of every tongue, out of every nation, and by implication, out of the limitations that come with those systems. Are we together? Let me tell you something about eternal life. Eternal life is a fact. One of the tenets of the Christian faith is the fact that when a man declares the lordship of Christ over his life, he is a possessor of eternal life. It's a fact. There are many tenets, what we call the pillars of the Christian faith. Number one of them is that salvation is only through Jesus Christ. You have to know what you believe. Salvation, salvation is only through Jesus Christ. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven given to man by which men must be saved. The first tenet of the Christian faith is the exclusive authority of Christ to be the only one to bring men to the Father. No prophet, no priest, no apostle, no prophet, no religion, no sect can claim to route you through another path to the Father. The Bible says, no man cometh to the Father except by me. The authorized medium to access the Father and the life of God is Jesus Christ. You are not a Christian if you don't believe this. Number two, salvation is by grace apart from works. The second tenet of, the, of redemption, the Christian faith, the pivot upon which everything we receive is salvation as far as receiving the life of Christ comes, it is by grace, through faith, and not by any ritual. The word works there does not mean no action. That's not what it means. There is an action. Your faith is an action. Are we together? The works there gives an idea of ritualistic activities. I don't have to slaughter an animal. I don't have to go to the mountain in Israel to bow my head. I don't have to face the sun or face Jerusalem. All of those ceremonial rituals have been ended. The Bible says Christ is the end of that law, not the end of action. The end of the law. Are we together now? There are three dimensions of the law. Not all of them left. You have to understand this. There is the revelation of the law 
that is the revelation of the character of God. That will never change. It predated the law. It, it will never change. The universality of God's character is consistent. Whether from the Old Testament, the New Testament, the soul that sins will die. Nothing changes it. Grace only intercepts it, but that reality is still a fact. Are we together? Number two, there is the ceremonial activity of the law. That has been abolished. The observation of sons, observation of festivals, and, and so on and so forth, in a way to know God, is been abolished. Are we together? Number three, the rituals. The rituals that men practice in an attempt to atone for their sins. So when the Bible says Christ is the end of the law, it doesn't mean that the coming of Christ changes the character of God. The universality of God's character is a fact. I am the Lord, I change it not. Are we learning something tonight? You have to understand the tenets upon which you stand. That number one, Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. Number two, that justification by faith is an act of his grace. You must understand this. It was an activity that no man could qualify to even participate and help God. So he had to do it by himself. The only responsibility of the believer as far as the impartation of eternal life is concerned is to believe and act by faith. According to Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 and 10. It says, who shall ascend to heaven and come? He said, the word is nigh thee in thy heart and even in thy mouth, the word of faith that we preach, right? That if you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe with your heart, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, the Bible says, and with the mouth confession is made unto soteria, salvation. So justification is by faith. I don't come to God with a goat, hoping that if, if any priest asks you to come with a goat, you see that he's not, he's not practicing all of that again. Are we together now? Very, very important. Number three, the third thing you have to understand is that the Holy Spirit is the custodian of the life of God. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of the life of God. It is in the office of Jesus the Son to introduce you to that life. But the personality that holds that life within you is the Spirit of God. And that only in partnership with Him will you have capacity to release the possibilities in that life. It's called the fellowship of the Spirit. You must know this if you want to work as a believer. The Holy Spirit represents the ministry of Christ now. Every time the Bible says in Christ, it means in partnership with the spirit that hails from him. I can do all things through Christ in partnership with him. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of the life of God and the one who makes it possible to release the potentials there. Listen to me very carefully. You can be a possessor of the life of God but not a manifester of the possibilities contained in that life. There are two different things. Possessing eternal life by confessing Christ is a fact. Has nothing to do with your feelings. But walking experientially in the reality of that life has to do with your partnership with the Holy Spirit. So he says, grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Listen carefully. According as his divine power hath given us, how many things? All things that pertain unto life and godliness. That all things was shrouded in a mystery called Zoe, brought by the Holy Spirit. His very presence is the proof of Zoe in you. He's the witness, the spirit of adoption. Are we together now? And then the Bible says, but they are accessed through knowledge. According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. It says through the knowledge. Here is, here, here is the big confusion in the body of Christ. Through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. The next verse says, wherefore has he given us these great and exceedingly precious promises that by them, 
by releasing them, we may prove experientially that we are partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So I have eternal life, but that eternal life is a possibility, potentially speaking, is at work in me. It will never stop the devil from buffeting you, but in partnership with the Holy Spirit, manifesting as various things, including the spirit of revelation, that Paul prayed for in Ephesians chapter 1. He was talking to people who were already born again, but were not releasing the possibilities that came with that life. And he says, for this cause, for as a, as a token of my desire for you to walk in these dimensions, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may grant unto you the spirit of revelation, wisdom, revelation, in the knowledge of him, that your heart, although has received eternal life that it be flooded with light are we together now then he says that you may understand the power that was exerted when he raised christ from the dead etc etc so i can be born again you can be born again but the reality of the implication of that life may not find expression that's why the bible says it is by grace available by grace but accessible through faith. Listen carefully. Available by grace, but accessible through faith. And the word faith there does not just mean believing. The faith there is a summation of every partnership that you have to go through in satisfying the condition to release that. So grace provides it. Faith, hallmarked by your obedience, releases it. This is the equation of the believer's work. If it's not available by grace, it cannot be accessible. So when we partner with the word of God, we are not ignoring the grace of God. We are receiving it. Our obedience is a token of our reception. It is available by grace, but received through faith. So when I tithe, it is not the law. I know that my prosperity and open heavens has been available by grace. But my obedience is a proof that I'm interested in seeing it work in my life. God cannot assume you are interested. You, he gave you a will and your obedience is partnering with your will. So, working out your salvation is not the law. It's called partnership. It's called koinonia. It is the token of your expression. It is the token of your interest to God that you want to see everything in him find expression in you Zoe the life of God received by many experienced by few received by many experienced by few there are many possibilities that are enshrined in that life number one the Bible tells us it's an indestructible life maybe let me finish what I started saying before we discuss a bit I was talking about certain pillars are we together the fellowship of the mystery that comes through partnership with the Holy Spirit number four the reality of righteousness righteousness Kenyon defines righteousness as the ability to stand before the presence of the Father without a sense of inferiority condemnation and guilt um, I, I agree with that except for the fact that righteousness is another name given to the nature of God the very nature of God at work in a human is called righteousness not just an ability to stand that is the effect of righteousness it's not righteousness the effect of righteousness is that the possessor can now stand blameless but that's not necessarily the definition are we together now righteousness the nature of God at work in me the authorization to be able to access his spirit righteousness number three number what number five is that in Christ and Christ alone is dominion a possibility in Christ and Christ alone is dominion a possibility 
Please understand this. This dominion thing, people chorus around as if they don't need God. Without God, dominion is a mirage. Dominion means exercising sovereign power over situations, over circumstances, and over the forces of darkness. Write it down. Dominion, the ability to exercise sovereign power, sovereign authority over situations, over circumstances, and over the forces of darkness is only a possibility in Christ. Every other thing outside Christ is negotiation and pacifism, not dominion. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If a herbalist tells you he's trying to drive a demon, it's not dominion. Through the mysteries of the kingdom, he will pacify the spirit. It's called occultic pacifism. That's why the demon can be angry again and say the sacrifice is over. So you have to renew it. But dominion is exerting sovereign control anytime, any day and remaining there. Not renewed by anything. Listen, there is no sacrifice in the village that is done once and for all. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Everybody, come on, this is Africa. Talk to me, Africa. There is no sacrifice that is done once and for all. Whether you are aware or not, somebody goes somewhere, smuggles himself into a shrine and renews it. Can be per annum, can be per two years, or can be per when the gods are angry. When they start manifesting, the priest will now say, the gods have not eaten and you are eating. So people begin to die. And what happens? They slaughter a child or an animal and pacify. That's not dominion. That's negotiation. That's not dominion. Bishop Oyedeko calls it a far above mentality. That's dominion. Where you are in a class that potentially speaking, you don't have any reason to relate with the vicissitudes here. And if at any point it comes, listen, let me tell you something about eternal life. Eternal life, listen carefully, eternal life is not a life void of challenges, but it's a life assured of complete victory. Now, thanks be to God, who always, always, not sometimes, now thanks be to God, who always causes us to triumph. The next time you say that you have the life of God, don't think you are saying you have a designer watch, a designer shirt. No. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, through the good times and bad, you are on you are God alone. Listen, if I give you a millionaire's ATM and I say, look, for some reason for just trusting me, I reward that trust by giving you an ATM. Potentially speaking, has more money than you will need in your life. This is recession. So an example with money is a very fruitful one. It will help people understand. Are we together? He gives you an ATM. Are we together now? But for some reason, you have to be trained to know that that ATM is a fact that there's money inside. It's a fact that potentially speaking, you have access. Now, you may move around with your friend that you used to eat with before. It does not stop that, the fact that you are a current possessor of that ATM. Experiencing the possibilities, someone must be introduced to your life or a document must be introduced that is a map that guides you and says stand before a machine the name is ATM and you slot it and you are patient the dynamics of the operation this is where knowledge and understanding comes and you can hold that ATM forever and stand and swallow saliva in front of a shop that the ATM can buy the whole shop are we together now now you are crying to the one who gave you the ATM and he's saying I have made available so out of his love giving you the ATM is enough but he sent someone to come and guide you but that person is so gentle it will take your cooperation so he says look we created this ATM it's not like they gave us 
we understand how this thing works and you say no 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 no. i went to school just hold on when i am difficult this is what many people do so you hold this atm for years and satan comes around and tells you this thing is only a small card and he says it's a small card put it in your pocket and you put it in your pocket and move around this is what makes christ look weak in the life of men this is what makes the word of God look like it is of non-effect. So in spite of the fact that this reality is a fact, knowledge of the systems of God, the provisions that have been made in place, everything we do in the kingdom is not adding to what Christ has done. It's accessing through partnership the mysteries of the kingdom that releases those possibilities. So that after five years of working with God, my life should be able to reflect more of God now than it did five years ago not just in terms of finances and all of that in terms of ascendance in the spirit i should not fear five years later what i was afraid of five years before i should not be a victim five years later of what i was a victim of before no. i prayed for a gentleman here i believe he's here who was in the school of ministry he had a dream and somebody appeared to him in the dream punched his hand and he woke up physically with a punch with blood many years before would look at it and say hi this is a serious issue and go and shout like fools around but when i saw it i said i want to touch it zoe zoe this is not the issue of prayer there is an implication to the life i hold let my the life of god make contact with that infirmity zoe god's life possessors of divine possibilities I want you to take away, take your eyes away from your challenge if you want to believe this. Because that's what Satan will use to mock you. You are a possessor of that life. Why are you barren? Five years. Don't mock yourself. And then you say it's true. Uh -uh. There is still a provision because to make sure that you release this life, he still gave unto some apostles and prophets look at all the provisions he put in place he gave you his life gave you his spirit gave you his word sent gifts in the body so that we are not without excuse if you fail you neglected the systems of god you neglected his life so you go to hell you neglected his word so there is no growth you neglect his spirit no direction you neglect the gifts so no lifting anyone that fails in life listen to me it's not god he neglected the systems the life of god the spirit of god the word of god the gifts that he has sent just like there are people here looking at me who have never been interested in the life of god the life of God is the most superior reflection of his love and benevolence. More than giving you a pastor. More than giving you a prophet and apostle. More than giving you the Bible. More than giving you a whatever it is. You have to receive them in that order. You don't receive his life. Even if you receive his prophets, you will not maximize your stay. The prophets can only assist as guided by God. They cannot impart life. A man of God can impart every other thing aside from eternal life. I can impart healing. I can impart an anointing. I can prophesy to you and your life will change. But I cannot say be born again. I can even stand before God to declare your sins forgiven. Right? In terms of the limitations that stand between you. But that is only a possibility in Christ. Please, I want you to believe this. This issue of being born again is not a choice. It's not a choice people buy phones now their phones get missing and they cry for days because owning a phone now is almost not a choice let's institutionalize salvation let's make it part of the fabric of growth to make it look like you don't say okay if you want to you want to you better come out whether you know it or not you want to are we together eternal life what you believe about jesus is important you must believe that he came from heaven if you believe he came from Israel you are not saved you are not a child of God there is a footballer called Jesus he cannot save men he can play football 
but he cannot save men. Please, let's clarify these loose ends quickly before we continue. There are things you have to believe. Jesus himself said in John chapter 6, I am the bread that came from heaven. He told us his location, that he came from heaven. You must believe that he came from heaven. Number two, you must believe in his incarnation. His incarnation is the mystery that made the world flesh. The womb of the woman is that mystery. The mystery that made the world, the eternal word that was with God, John 1 verse 1, become flesh. Many Christians don't know this. You must believe in the incarnation. Not reincarnation, incarnation. If you believe in the reincarnation of Jesus Christ, you are an antichrist. Incarnation, incarnation. The word became flesh. Number three, you must believe in his humanity. He didn't just come and die and went away. He walked upon the earth. Partook of the weaknesses of men. There is Jesus the man. He walked upon the earth. The Bible says he was in every way like us, tempted, yet without sin. If you don't believe in the humanity of Jesus Christ, you will shortchange yourself from walking in the fullness of the life of God. You must believe in the dominion he exerted by means of the presence of the Holy Spirit in his life. Not by means of being Jesus, the Son of God. When he came upon the earth, he stripped himself of his Godship and submitted himself as a model to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So every result gotten in Jesus' life was not because he was Jesus. It was because he was under the influence of the spirit so that we are not without excuse the same spirit that made jesus the christ is the same spirit that will make jakes the christ is the same spirit that will make Ejimi the christ is the same spirit that will make joshua selma the christ believe in the humanity of jesus he demonstrated the sovereign power of god flawlessly above creation above principalities and powers he demonstrated to us in his earthly life that zoe is a possibility are we together you must believe in the passion of the christ theologically speaking the entire event that took place beginning from the upper room the communion where they received the holy spirit was where they had the communion are we together down to the experience in Gethsemane, down to Pontius Pilate and Herod, who used Jesus as a scapegoat to become friends. They were enemies. But Jesus, look how powerful Jesus was. Even before he died, he reconciled enemies. Then you must believe in every activity. The mystery of the whip, for by his stripes we are healed. The mystery of the crown of thorns that was put upon his head an exchange for our dominion restored you must believe in the mockery that he received you must believe in the fact that he was on his way to Golgotha the place of skull as an exchange for us Jesus did not die on the road he was hung on a tree it was necessary that he had to be crucified if Jesus died and it was not by crucifixion he would not be able to take the sins of the world there are conditions to be able to take the sins of the world Number one, you must become flesh. Number two, your blood must be sinless. Number three, you must enact a mystery that transfers the sin of men to you. And that mystery is called the communion. The communion is not what Christians take in church. The communion is a sacrament. There's a theological name for it. It's called the doctrine of interpenetration. The mystery with which two people become one is what is used in marriage. Two separate entities by covenant. Still different personalities but one in the spirit. And that is enacted through the communion. John chapter 6. Are you getting blessed tonight? John chapter 6. Let's read. Help us media. Let's read verse 35. Okay, just for time's sake, let's run to 53. Just four verses, 53 to 57. John chapter 6. 53. Jesus is speaking now. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He's introducing them.
to the mystery that will make the sins of the whole world come into him. You have to understand, it's not just that he died for us, we died in him. So you need to find out how we entered him. Because Galatians 2.20 says, I am or I have been crucified with Christ. Not just that he was crucified for me. Are we together? Jesus died for me. That's an act of love. I died with him. That's identification. There are two different things. It's not just enough to believe he did it for you. You must believe that you did it in him. That's why we are seated with him. But we must trace where the journey started. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat of my flesh. Listen carefully. Ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood. What will happen to you? Ye have no life. You are living physically, but you are not a possessor of my life. Now, to eat the flesh and to drink the blood is a mystery. There is a prophetic act called communion. A physical prophetic act, but it's a language. Remember Hosea chapter 10, right? Hosea chapter 12. I have spoken to you by the prophets. I have used similitudes. Similitudes. It's in the character of God to use similitudes. What we call prophetic act. A foreshadow, an um, adumbration of something physical. Like he told Moses to lift the rod. And that rod is Christ. So it's in the character of God. That's what I mean by the universality of his character. It's consistent both pre-old, old, New Testament, post-new. <laughs> Hallelujah. 54. Who so eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, hath zoe. There is. And I will raise him up at the last day. 55 for my flesh is meat indeed now this sounds like occultism so you have to understand my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed 56 he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth aha he's now switching the parable for you to understand that he's not necessarily talking of physically eating He's talking about a condition of intimacy that can be likened to eating and drinking. Prophetically adumbrated by a physical activity. To eat the blood, the body and blood of Jesus is not just to eat things. No. It is a dimension of intimacy that begins by accepting and receiving him. So he says, dwelleth in me and I in him. Eating and drinking is an adumbration of a system that gets you into Christ and gets Christ into you. Last verse. As the living Father had sent me. Now listen. And I live by the Father. Do you know what that means? That means I ate and drank of the Father. So I now live in the Father. That same system that made me to live by the Father. It says, so that he eateth me shall also live by me. Listen. Are we, you are intelligent now. Jesus is saying, the father gave me his life. And he called how he got that life, eating and drinking. And he said, the same way I ate of the father's life. That means I ate of his flesh, I drank of his blood to have his life. So also, that means we must understand how did Jesus receive the way. Number one. He was born of the spirit of the father. Understand this. He was born of the spirit of the father. Number two. He was empowered by the spirit of the father. Number three. He walked in obedience to the spirit of the father. These three conditions translated to him eating and drinking he released the reality of the fullness of the life of God everybody look at me communion is more than bread and wine if your experience at communion stops at just eating bread and drinking wine you are carrying out a religious activity that is powerless the eating and the drinking only becomes powerful 
on the strength of your understanding it is your understanding that releases the life are we together that means hi hallelujah every day of my life i can be eating the communion when i do the i eat the communion certain things happen many of them we're going to look at it the bible says that we testify and we declare of the lord's death how do we declare of his death we died with him we are alive that means my being alive is a testament that he is alive when you understand all of these facets of this communion then you will find out you can release the possibilities that come with it healing breakthrough an invocation of the mystery of mercy I can spend all night talking about the mercy of God. The mercy of God is a mystery that starts with sinners, but is needed in the kingdom. Otherwise, we will not attain that height. Mercy is a mystery in God that vetoes judgment in your life. It has nothing to do with whether the judgment is legitimate or not. The moment your life is in a situation where on legal basis, the devil should prevail over you, what you need is the application of the mystery of his mercy are we together remember when David took a man's wife are we together now David was a man who loved God he took a man's wife killed the man and when he had a man's wife a particular prophet came his pastor came and gave a parable. He started with a parable and gave a parable, a parable that reflected that a man bullied a man and took something. And David said, who is that man? And he said, you are the man. You are the man. Do you know what happened? The Bible says immediately David repented and sought for mercy. And I think it was Abner, his prophet. He said, ah, the Lord has shown you mercy and you will not die meaning the price for that thing was dead if David did not invoke the mercy like Saul he would die too so David did not become an heir to the throne and then a predecessor of Jesus because of perfection the difference between him and Saul was mercy there was nothing Saul did that David did not do the difference was mercy mercy is only available in Christ mercy is a mystery that Satan cannot give mercy is a mystery that pastors they can pardon but they can't show mercy we interchange the words mercy is a mystery mercy is not to be excused mercy is that they pay for you so you enjoy the freedom but at the expense of someone else's there are few men who can show mercy they can pardon you but mercy does not take away the price it only exempts you hallelujah tenants of the Christian faith unshakable foundations that will make a man remain in Christ doctrine will rise and fall denomination will rise and fall technology will introduce sex and rise and fall but after many years you will still be standing let me tell you if you ever fall in your Christian race, it's not because Satan prevailed over you. It's because your foundation was shaking. When you don't know what you believe, that make up your conviction. The day you meet with somebody who is an intelligent professor who studied Scientology, he will sit with you and use quantum physics to wash away your intelligence and make you look at Jesus and say, I never knew you were... You were um, Buddha's mate it's just that you came ahead of him every religion acknowledges Jesus but what you acknowledge him as makes the difference you acknowledge Jesus Christ as a carpenter's son it is true but you are still going to hell are we together now yes I believe in him and this is what I believe about him this is what the devil when he comes to your life he probes the dimensions of your convictions Satan is not a fool he doesn't come to attack men when he came to Jesus he started throwing questions the questions were testing how far 
and he found out ah every dimension there was a word basis that word did not come by mistake he went to the temple from age 12 he had been learning he had been building when satan comes to your life he will begin to throw issues around your life to find what dimension of spiritual reality has not become spirit and life to you that becomes his access point to your life satan cometh to me so he will come to everybody but he did not find meaning there is a possibility that he can find listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters you need to sustain an orientation in the spirit that defies every assault of darkness for instance the bible says while we look not at the things that are unseen but the things that are seen so if the devil wants to manipulate your senses to make you look like if you are truly in christ don't mind this stupid joshua selman and what he's saying if he's really in christ why is a and b and c happening the happening in your life does not change the fact that his life is in you Our eternal destinies are determined by the, whether or not we are possessors of that life. But the qualities of our lives on earth are dependent on the extent of our partnership through faith with the Holy Spirit in order to release those lives. So if I look at a man's life and his life demonstrates a dimension of spiritual possibility that is not in my life, aside from other factors like the election of grace and other things, it must mean therefore that there is a dimension of partnership he has sustained with the Holy Spirit that I've not been able to come into it. That's why a family can have five people. Their father can be a pastor, but the extent of their results will differ. Are we together now? Listen, when Jesus walked upon the earth, he was very specific with his actions. He intended for certain things to be understood about his work on earth. That's why he had to reveal himself to Paul to document these mysteries. Although the disciples saw him, when he resurrected, he still was with them 40 days and then left them 10 days in the upper room to receive the Holy Spirit. But even in the midst of that, he still had to anoint a man, Paul of Tarsus, Saul, who later became Paul, to be able to articulate the mysteries Paul calls it the fellowship of the mystery. The fellowship of the mystery. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians 1, 2, 3 that we are alienated from the life of God through ignorance. Alienated from the life. Are we together now? Not experientially walking in the fullness of that life. Listen, tonight as we prepare to receive the communion, I want you to come to terms with certain things. Number one, you must have the brokenness and the unashamedness to admit that if there is anything in your life that is yet to reflect the fullness of Christ, it is not because of a limitation posed by God. It is that there is a dimension of partnership with the Holy Spirit. Are we together? That has not yet begun or has not yet come to fruition for you to experience that dimension. You are only authorized to receive results if you can maintain that posture. That my life and your life today is not a reflection of who God is, but a reflection of how far we have chosen to walk with Him. It's an uncomfortable truth, but victory starts from that standpoint. Either He lied or there's something wrong on our own part. Are we together? So if there are witches appearing every night, destroying your life, you sleep and somebody appears. Now listen, let me balance something. To deny the existence of that possibility is another dimension of foolishness. This is what sometimes we preachers do. We say it does not exist. No, it exists. You can only be exempted. You can't stop it. Satan still has authority over the systems. He's still the prince of the power of air. He's called a prince. The spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience. For a season, he's still allowed. What happened is that God created a mystery that exempts you. Causes are real. They are still at work. Yokes are real. They are still at work. They will still attempt you. 
and until your knowledge bails you out knowledge of what the systems of the kingdom bails you out you will still be a victim of them so when you come to me as a man of god and say sir somebody came in the night and slept with me i said that's nonsense no you are not being accurate you may have ascended a level of understanding that exempts you from that experience but to deny the existence of that thing is a joke what i can do is i can introduce to you what christ gave to conquer it hallelujah you have won the victory lift your voice and sing unto him hallelujah you have won You're seated in majesty. Seated in majesty. You are the reason, King. You are the reason, King. Hallelujah. My life and my experiences are too small to limit everything God said about Zoe. If I live my life today dying of sickness, dying of failure my life cannot be a model enough to say this is all that is contained in god and i must have the unashamedness to admit that my limitations are not caused by the inability of god to produce that result it's been encapsulated in the way it should be a challenge for me that there is a dimension of understanding through the ministry of the word the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of his body we are members of his body not just his spirit we are part of the body and the body as an entity holds possibilities so i can love jesus christ but i may not have been taught that part of his system is the introduction of apostles and prophets that can speak over your life that can make me walk barren of the possibilities of god but when i study through the word that there is a provision made like that then i can align myself to that provision and now begin to walk in a new reality tonight is a night of brutal admittance we have to come to a point where we admit that listen my father has not gotten a job for 20 years my mother has not gotten a job for 20 years it is not because god cannot release jobs it is because there may be a dimension either they have refused to receive his life partner with the spirit understand his word or discern his body these are the causes these are the things that are responsible for the limitations of people So what we are doing tonight is not why you will be healed. What you are understanding now is why you will be healed. This understanding is what gives life to the wafers. The person who made the wine you are about to drink may be somewhere. You bought the wine. He was doing business. The person who made the wafers you are about to eat, he may even be an unbeliever. He just had that Christians eat this thing often. And he said, this is a stream of income and produced it. So you are eating somebody's value. You are not eating power. It is your understanding that translates that mystery. Like water turned to wine. Between the water and the wine was a word. When a word came, it turned the water to wine. It is that word, that understanding that will turn bread to his body. And the drink to his blood. Color does not matter. Whether the color is green or blue. It's only red to affect your psychology even if this is what you take it is your understanding in the kingdom power is released through understanding not just motion you tie it is not the money that brings the power is the understanding that gives life to the activity that's why jesus said this is how you will build and the gates of hell will not prevail upon this rock the rock is not peter the rock is a system upon this formula you will build never speak outside of understanding so the system is that you first understand then you act when you act out of understanding you are building upon a rock when you act void of understanding 
you are building upon sand. The sons of Skiba showed us a graphic example of that. They spoke, but there was no understanding. And he said, Jesus, I know. He built upon a rock. Paul, I know. He built upon a rock. But you are just speaking. That means you come and eat because you heard that Bishop Oyedeko blessed communion and people took it. And all of a sudden, people were vomiting animals. And then you take it. And as soon as you take it, as you are getting home, the same spirit comes again. Because it's not the ritual. The understanding is where the power lies. So Paul, I repeat, Ephesians 1, for this cause. It's not enough that you have received the way for this cause. I have to go the extra mile to bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That he may grant unto you. That the Holy Spirit may reveal himself unto you as the spirit of wisdom and understanding. So that you will know epignosis come into an understanding not awareness come into an experience where you and the information has become one when you understand this then you take that step and you find out that life is now released some of you because of this you will not even be able to hold the communion cup because you are now holding it now with understanding the demon that oppresses you has seen the light. Understanding gives life to the symbol. Remember, the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding. When that light comes, that's what releases the power. Ordinarily, you would have carried it and eaten and said, can I take another one? You see why Paul rebuked the church in Corinth. They were not discerning the Lord's body. A time came when many of them started using the communion for alcoholism. Because they did not have a system of preserving this thing. So they looked forward to communion services. Communion will always remain. And then they didn't just take a little this thing. This is just for social reasons. And then to guide people financially. But then you could have a big cup and fetch. So there were people who would fetch and go and hide somewhere. They didn't believe in Jesus and they would drink. And Paul found out they were getting tipsy in the middle of an outpouring and paul said no you people should come we need bible study something is wrong you guys if you are hungry that's what paul said if you are hungry do what go and eat in your house don't come to the lord's house and violate his temple by eating he said for this cause this is it for not discerning for acting foolishly out of understanding many are weak many are sick many do sleep when was the last time you saw written in the grave of a man that he died because he didn't detain the lost body they say he died of cardiac failure for this cause so if i want to improve my life it's not all up to god the way is at work it's been available by grace but my partnership i must check the systems i'm ignoring I am ignoring the life of God like some of you are doing, looking at me now. Not born again. When you see people talk about get born again, say, forget about them, Jared. They are just hopeless people. After all, so, so, so sociology said religion is the opium of the masses. That guy may probably be in hell now. Be careful. Are we together now? Hmm. Don't, don't, don't listen to junks. You can write it and pass your exams. But when it comes to your eternal destiny, you must be serious. You have rejected his life or you have rejected the ministry of his spirit you have rejected the ministry of his word you have rejected the ministry of his body these are the provisions made i want to ask you a question tonight which one have you rejected you can easily know it by looking at your life you have insulted every man of god you know by saying look forget it I insult every man of God. We can all go to Christ. You have accepted Christ. You may have accepted his word. But you have rejected his body. There is a consequence. A bitter one. They are taken for a prey. And none say it. Restore. The Bible tells us that there is a system with which God built his ecclesia. The church. He said Christ is the chief cornerstone. Immediately you meet Christ. He introduced two ministries. Called the apostles and the prophets. They are the foundations of the church. If you do not meet them, your building cannot grow. The cornerstone is there. You ignore them, you build nonsense. It's a system. 
It's an election of grace. Which one have you ignored? Some of you have ignored, have supposedly admitted the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You like power. You don't doubt. Even if somebody jumps up and hangs in the air, you like it. But you have ignored the ministry of the word. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That illumination that comes through his word. You have ignored. Pay attention to what I'm teaching tonight. You have ignored that boundary of revelation and you will find out that there will be a lot of charismatism around your life and you will know which one is witchcraft and which one is of God because there is no compass. There is no, the word of God is like a buffer solution. It defines the dimensions of the operations of the Holy Spirit. So when you are going out of it, the word of God guides you and says, no, every manifestation must be consistent with the character of God. There are people who have embraced supposedly the ministry of the word. The Bible calls them men who have come around the baptism of John and ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Acts 19, remember, have you received the Holy Ghost since he believed? Verse 1. And verse 2, they says, we have not even heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And Paul was surprised. They were believers, disciples, going through Bible study. He said, unto what then were you baptized? They said, the baptism of John. And Paul said, no, the baptism of John was a baptism of repentance to the end that they should believe on he that should come, even Jesus Christ. And when they had it, the Bible says they were baptized in the name of the Lord. And Paul laying his hands on them, they now received the ministry of the Spirit of God, right? They prayed in tongues and prophesied. The Bible says there were about 12 of them. Acts chapter 19, 1 to 5. Thank you very much. So it is possible to believe the Bible just because you inherited it from your pastor but not walk with the spirit Jesus died to make all these systems available his life in us exclusively given through the office of the Christ but released by the interaction of that believer with the spirit of God the word of God the body we teach a lot about the word of God we teach a lot about the spirit of God, but we ignore his body. Christ is the head. He's not a head moving around. That head has a body and he acknowledges that the body is part of himself. And then in another mystery, he calls that body his wife. You don't ignore a man's wife and, leave, and then he will laugh with you. The Bible said jealousy is the rage of a man. So as you insult his wife, simply because the wife is wounded, are we together? If a Jimmy's wife has an injury and you say because of that she's no longer a woman, a Jimmy will stand close to her first before he will give you a slap. You say by this little act, let me prove to you that when I said I do, I meant it. I also said I mean it. So, the man of God may not be perfect, but he's still part of the system. When you criticize him, you are criticizing somebody's wife and that man will react. Are you hearing what I'm saying? for this cause. I've taught it here. Go and get the teaching on the body of Christ. I told you the mystery of receiving from the body of Christ was adumbrated in the parable of Samson. Samson went to the Philistines and he gave them a riddle. He said, out of something weak came something strong and they could not decipher the parable. He killed a lion and then bees did not know where to go and put honey. They went to a carcass and put honey there meaning if you must enjoy the honey you can endure the smell so you come to a man of god who is temperous but look beyond the temper there is an anointing there is always honey in the midst of the carcass this is the mystery of discerning the body you have to ignore the limitations that are in people so if the pastor does not look like you you may see him a yopi person and babs as if he's, he's some of these touts around these, these Vegas guys. He may be, that may not be the best. But the truth of the matter is that he may be anointed. The woman may dress and she may be careless, you know. Like I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday and I told them I went for a program. And there was a woman of God who was introducing something. And Kai, I'm not somebody who talks about dressing, but mm -mm, even till today, it's too much. It's, it's not... It's not, she didn't leave anything to the imagination. Very bad for a congregation. Very bad for a congregation. I say it again, very bad for a congregation. Anyway, it happened. 
But the fact remains that the woman was very anointed. Can you endure the smell? Because the honey is there. It's a mystery how the bees endure the smell to pitch it there. There is this treasure. Let me give you the New Testament translation. That treasure is hidden in, the Bible didn't say in vessels, in earthen vessels. So you may not like me as a person, but why don't you look beyond the limitation and see that there is a treasure. That's why there is no church that cannot bless me. If you search for Jesus, you will find him. I've ministered in all kinds of places. I remember when we were coming back from Ekiti, when we met some of the, 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 the men of God that prayed for us, Pastor Jake, they could not speak Yoruba. That's enough to annoy me. Say, so what is all this? I'm the one who needs the miracle. I need long life. That Baba cannot speak English, but he's walking in an experience of a reality. What do you think we did? We looked for an interpreter. There has to be an interpreter. We found an interpreter who came, and the man said we should kneel down. Now, I have received Jesus Christ. I am walking in partnership with his spirit. I have received of the word, but I discerned his body. I would have said I'm a man of God. I, I was going for a crusade. It was a powerful crusade. Mighty miracles. And on the way, we stopped. And the man didn't even say, you are pastors. Say, kneel down. Really, that's what he said. And in Yoruba, he was just praying. I didn't hear one thing he said. But all I know is that that man was long. He was living long enough for me to cover that grace. Which part of God's systems have you ignored? Please hear this message tonight. Is the answer to the prayer. That demon that has oppressed you. You have quoted scripture. That's very good. It's true that you are working with the Holy Spirit. But your knowledge is limited. But there is still out of his benevolence. He has kept an anointing with a vessel. One word go. Will set you free of 10 years of limitations. But we will refuse. And say look. I know Jesus Christ by myself. So you limit God's possibilities to only the revelation that the Holy Spirit and the word is permitted through your willingness. And sometimes your lifetime may not afford you the dimension of revelation it takes for the result you need. So you must tap into every channel. That's what he meant when he told Nicodemus, you must be born of the water and the spirit. Otherwise, you cannot enter. You can see it, but you will not enter. Seeing the kingdom is that it has come to you. But entering it is becoming a testament of the reality. So you can now say, since I was young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. No, that thing was not a poem to be recited by everyone. It was a man's testimony based on a dimension of possibility. You have to make it yours before you speak otherwise you will keep mocking yourself this is what these unguided confessions that are not out of understanding will keep mocking us if ye are abraham's children you will do the works of abraham what was his work he believed god god told him something god said abraham i want to introduce a dimension to you i have not done to anybody and abraham believed god tonight is easter all over the world, there are cathedrals, there are ministries, there are crusades, packed full with the over 2 billion Christians on earth, attempting men of God. There are tapes rolling all over churches right now. Every man of God attempting sincerely to reveal something that the people can take back about Easter. I brought to you a reality. The Bible says this is the record. It was documented. God has given us eternal life but this life is in his son and whosoever has the son has that life but grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge according as his divine power hath not will hath is a fact giving us giving us giving us every limitation in my life and your life is a revelation of something about the systems of God we have ignored or are still learning 
and have not come into that fullness when you know that you put an urgency to your pursuit for God for the more I know you the more I want to know you Jesus more of you for the more I see your face the more I want to see you Jesus Shortly we are going to take the communion. Please those relevant people, let's station them. There are three mysteries that the Lord revealed to me that will be open to us tonight as we partake of the communion. Three. Number one, the communion tonight is an encounter with the spirit of revelation. We need revelation in our lives. We need revelations in our lives. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. We need revelation in our lives. The limitation of my life and your life is not dependent on Satan. It's dependent on how far I can access the dimensions of the possibilities that the life of God can provide based on the knowledge that I have. His life only gives you potentials. Your partnership accurate partnership makes it an experience tonight as you partake of this let something boil in you that all men are equal in Christ but they are not equal in possibilities our possibilities are determined by the truths we have chosen to receive and the dimensions of the systems of the kingdom we have comprehended and so we must press Hear what Paul says. He says, this one thing I do. Forgetting the things that are behind, I press. There is something I need to know about death to stop being afraid of it. There is something I need to know about poverty. There is something I need to know about restoration. There is something I need to know about fruitfulness. The love of God is revealed. When we study his systems, the Bible says the invisible things of God, right? The invisible things are seen, they are learned, they are taught by the things that appear. So I look at and say, what, what kind of a man is this that grants me access to his life, sends his spirit to me, causes men moved by the same spirit to document more information? The apostles did not have a Bible. All they had was the Torah right the Pentateuch the five books of Moses but now God has gone the extra mile for our generation because he knows evil and wickedness will increase and he has left a document to still help us and then in addition to that he has empowered men and women in the body so that we are not without excuse and what a joy the Lord has spoken to us this year that is our year of triumph that means we can walk with these systems of the kingdom and rise when i was studying i was just studying the passion of the christ tonight and i was so touched looking at everything jesus went through just for me just for me jesus came and did it just for me just for me just for me jesus came and did it just for me that's what he did tonight well the cross will always represent the love god had for me when the Lord of glory heaven sent Gave all on Calvary Just for me Just for me Jesus came and did just for me So what is the implication of tonight? I remember I remember his sacrifice while he was on the way to Golgotha 
the Bible says that there were certain things in the mind of God and Paul was given access to those things they were encapsulated in a document and Paul calls it a testament and then Hebrews chapter 9 Paul is speaking pastor Alpha already there Jesus knew that those things would be activated only at his death so they were prepared and when he died there was still ignorance and he started moving through holy men to document these things to say now you have access I have died for every will is not yet activated until the death of the testator Jesus died if he did not die eternal life will not be a reality he hung on that cross between two thieves a 33 and a half year old man naked there was no covering no he was naked and he looked at the world that he came to die for and the people yelled crucify him let his blood be on our children they were prophesying something that would really happen because his blood had to be on their children for them to be saved what was a statement of war was a prophecy let his blood be upon our children they didn't know that was why he was on the cross they mocked him let me tell you something Jesus did not go to the cross as Jesus he went to the cross as me and you when he stood there he saw me he saw Joshua Selman he saw Koinonia remember Acts chapter 2 they were caught in their heart and they said men and brethren what do we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive that promise for the promise is unto you and unto your children and to your children's children he says as many as are afar off which the Lord will call this is where we came in in Acts chapter 10 reading from verse 38 down to 44 the Bible says the moment the Holy Ghost fell on all they that had him day of the circumcision the Jews said ah I perceive truly we now see that God is no respecter of person but that in every nation whoever calls upon his name will be saved tonight we are taking the communion number one access to the spirit of revelation according to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 I bow my knees and I pray for you O church of the Lord Jesus Christ that I desire you to release the reality of Zoe that life that is indestructible that life that is far above principalities and powers the life that is capable of demonstrating dominion here and now the life that is characterized by victory the life of meaning the life of fulfillment the life of purpose but it's access through knowledge the spirit of revelation number two the second thing that the communion will release to us tonight is reenacting that covenant of life through that prophetic act that we are going to be doing the Bible says he that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath my life do you know what that means there are many things at work in your life now that were not sponsored by that eternal life watch this my body as designed by God is supposed to grow through a system there should be a symmetry and a synergy correct if a boil starts coming out from here that boil is growing not at the same pace with my body now biologically they can say something is responsible but spiritually we know that another life is responsible so the result of that another life I see it different from my body so what you do is by the mystery of the communion you are taking it to your physical body physical flesh and blood it's a mystery that reminds the devil that every part of you was handed over to Christ that means whatever is not a derivative of the life of God put it scripturally every tree that was not planted by my father meaning there are other farmers are we together there are other what farmers for instance while men slept an enemy he's a farmer the Bible says he came and sold he's a farmer and left whether that sleep is a spiritual sleep psychological sleep as a result of 
the weight of the vicissitudes of life fatigue several things happening in your life and you did not know and it weighed you down or as a result of real physical sleep the activities of darkness listen as you take this i want you to discern the lord's body don't just to discern the lost body is not to eat slowly to discern the lost body is to take it with understanding it's not that you close your eyes you take it slowly no 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 that is religion to discern the lord's body is that as you are taking this truly speaking this is wafers this is wine but the, my understanding authorizes the holy spirit to form an eclipse between that that activity that dinner thing and me and as i lift it is the same thing as the servants who were carrying water while they lifted it the distance between his word and your mouth causes a miracle to happen this is what will make somebody hold it and just the distance from the table to your mouth you can't stand it an anointing responding to your understanding that's why somebody can take the communion and all of a sudden you feel you just took something small that before it got to your stomach a lot of itself was hanging around different parts of your body but all of a sudden you take it and you are already feeling fire on your leg did that thing get to your leg it's a mystery you only gave him space tonight can your communion be a body that you have prepared for him we have prepared a body remember a body has thou prepared without a body he cannot move so the communion just like the human body can become the body tonight that communion can be the hand that heals you tonight that communion can be the mystery that destroys the devourer for your non tithing and God can say I give you a clean slate start again tonight that communion can be a reversal of several things if you take it with understanding are we together so we are going to pray but before we pray overflow one overflow two by the road those online from any nation and any place you are listening to the first key is to receive the life of God Zoe the life of God is not Christianity Christianity was a description given to possessors of that life God is not initiating you into a religion he says come on to me listen there are people seated here looking at me inside and outside you are tired and you're saying apostle as I stand right now sincerely I don't even know what my life is about I have tried like the worship team sang I've done everything but tonight I am in all humility lifting my heart and my hands and saying I need that life my father refused to receive the life my mother refused to receive the life my brothers and sisters refused to receive the life I choose to receive that life and there are yet others who may say at one point I came for an altar call but sincerely I don't know the name of what I did I only know that they said congratulations and they gave me hamper I ate what was inside but nothing entered me and this night I want to eat of my the bread he said my bread is my body is meat indeed for in the sanctuary God is near. oh come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary wherever you are just wait till I start counting before you come I'm going to count one to five because of time there are people here who are saying apostle as I sat listening to you I knew that I had to be sincere with myself and I knew that I have to win this war my life does not reflect the way in any way number one I have not even received it every time I hear preachers talk like Saul of Tarsus I mock them and I say they are wasting my time but tonight I want to win that war and number two there are others who said well 
I know that I came and confessed something. For a while I was even walking with God. But sincerely I know between me and God right now that I'm not serious with him. And I don't want any pretense again. Wherever you are, the Holy Spirit is already speaking to you. Overflow 1, 2, wherever you are. I want you to make your way here. I would have asked you to go to the overflow outside, but there is a reason why I want all of you here. So as I count one to five, there are people there. I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain. Leave your seat and come out here right now. If you are ashamed of your friend, you are ashamed of your brother, you are ashamed of your sister, then you are wasting the mystery of Easter. Start coming. One, God bless you. Leave your seat and come. Don't be ashamed. Clap for them, Koinonia. Appreciate them as they come. God bless you. Keep coming. That flows from Help me see Emmanuel's faith Keep coming. Lose all their guilty strength. The third mystery that you will receive tonight from the communion is an empowerment for a strange order of dominion. Please don't forget these three things. Don't forget these three things. Number one, access to the spirit of revelation. Number two, an exit of everything that was not planted by God. There will be mighty, mighty miracles and deliverances as you take this. Number three, an empowerment for a strange order of dominion. The centurion said, for I am a man under authority. I say unto one, go, and he goeth. I say unto another, come, and he cometh. Speak the word only. The Bible says, where the word of a king is, there is power. That as you partake of this communion, something will come upon you. The Bible says that when you take it, right? 1 Corinthians 11, when you take it, that you announce, you declare the Lord's death. The meaning of that is that you tell principalities and powers that the person you used to know is not the person now. Jesus died and I died in him. And now the life that I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Another system. So way, God's life. Now this is what we are going to do. I'm going to give you two prayer points. We are going to pray seriously. And um, everyone outside, you don't have to come. There are the first overflow at the projector. There is a provision like this. The second overflow at the projector. There is a provision like this. And then in here, we did it because of time. Now, this is all you are going to do. Those here, you would come this way. Just take the cup and the bread. Drop the cup there and march this way. Those here, you will do the same thing. And then, I think there will be a provision here at the minister's stand so that we don't have chaotic things. Please, some of you will fall under the anointing as you do it. Just be careful and let's just coordinate them. I want to pray and bless this now. And then we are going to pray. The moment you partake of it, you go back and find a corner and begin to blast in tongues. And pray these three things in your life. That's happy Easter for you. You have to pray it with all your heart. And say, Lord, I understand this mystery. Let my understanding permit the life of God to find expression. Prayer point number one. Lord, I believe. I believe. But in case I do not believe, help my own belief. Lift your voice and pray. Whatever is not of faith is sin. Lift your voice and pray. Pray inside and outside. Pray inside and outside. Are you praying? Help my own belief. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, 
Emmanuel, Emmanuel, your name is called Emmanuel, your name is called Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. point number two Lord as I partake of this let the mystery of the communion be enacted in me whatever this represents I permit it to work in me lift your voice and pray seriously inside outside those online get bread and get wine or water get something that represents the communion Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen. I want to pray for the communion. 1 Corinthians 11 from verse 23. The apostle is speaking and he says, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, listen, that same night which was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 25. After the same manner, he also took the cup. Listen, are you seeing the order? So you take the bread, then you take the cup. He took bread and said, Eat. Then he took the cup. And he says, this is my blood of the New Testament. Do this as often. And then he says, 26. For as often as he eats this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Now he says, for this cause, verse 30, many are weak for not partaking of this with understanding. Many are weak. Many are sick. And many among you sleep. Meaning, if I partake of it with understanding, among other things, it should destroy weakness. It should destroy sickness. And it should destroy death. That's the next prayer point. Lord, weakness, sickness, and the plague of death, any kind of death, it lives my life now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Over sickness, weakness, death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now please agree with me, I want to pray. I tell you, I sense such a strong anointing in this place. I'm praying here at the projector stand everywhere. Those online, regardless of any nation, just go and get something. Water, wafers, food, whatever. It's just a token. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one will. Oh. Oh, 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 
of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, tonight I stretch my hands prophetically. In the name of Jesus Christ. Upon this communion, this is ordinary wine and wafers. But Lord, we command it to lose its earthly significance now and take on a heavenly significance. And Lord, I pray, using this as a point of contact to every other communion set around the world connected to us now, I decree and declare that this becomes a type and a shadow, a similitude of the body of Jesus a similitude of the bread the blood of Jesus Christ and Lord I pray that as we partake tonight we access the spirit of revelation as we partake tonight every stranger in our life must go immediately and Lord as we partake tonight fresh fire for dominion and triumph in the name of Jesus Therefore, Lord, we declare this blessed. We call it blessed right now. I put the word of God upon it. And I declare that it will produce miracles. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please start coming. Start coming. We worship him. Help us. Let's just have some people come and stand. Open it up.
what is wrong here? Why are there no people coming? Please, quickly, if you are coming, ushers coordinate them, protocol coordinate them, please. There's a lot to do. If you are coming, double up, please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's save time. Huh. Like Jesus, are you praying there is no other name? Are you praying no, 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 there is no other name? Like Jesus, there is no other name. No, no, there is no other name. Like Jesus, there is no other name. No, 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 there is no other name. Like Jesus, there is no other name. No, 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 there is no other name. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. Say, and you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. I say, you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the hey. only living God. I say, you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. Hey, I say, you are the only. God, yes you are. You are the only living God. I say you are the only living God. Yes you are. You are the only living God. We praise you. 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 We love. You are the only living God. You are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. I say you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. Hey, I say you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. Hey, I say you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only. living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. I say you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. We praise it. 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 We love you. We love you. Your name be glorified. Hey, you are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. Oh. You are the Lord. Let your name Let be glorified.
your name. We give you glory. We give you glory. And honor. To what the Lord. Let's your name. We give you glory. We give you glory. And honor. And honor. You are. You are the Lord. Let's your name. Jesus conquered the world and gave us a victory. Say, victory, victory. Jesus conquered all the sickness and gave me victory, victory. Success, 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 success. Hallelujah. Hey. Jesus conquer the world and give us a victory, 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 victory. Hallelujah. Hey. Jesus conquer all the sickness and give me good health, good health, good health. And give me success, 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 success. Hallelujah. Jesus conquered the world and give me victory, 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 victory. Hallelujah. Jesus conquered the sickness and give me good health. Good health, good health, good health, hallelujah. On the hill that's the cross, on the cross, there is blood for me. Hey, for me. On the hill side, on the hill, there is blood for me. On the cross, on the cross, on the cross, there is blood for me.
Hallelujah. There are two ministries that I believe will be reignited in a fresh dimension. Two very great anointings. I really believe with all my heart and and it's been confirmed from different people seasoned veterans of the gospel across the earth number one is the healing ministry i believe that the church has lost a major dimension of the healing ministry it's true even some of us that supposedly walk in it the truth is that most people have not experienced the full import of the healing ministry the healing ministry I'm going to be showing you a few things and then we'll pray we'll get to the business of the night the healing ministry is very important it played a major role the challenge was that most of the healing evangelists got to a point where they were carried away by the healing and no longer Christ and his purposes because the healing ministry is a means is a sign that points men to Jesus it's possible that because of the charismatism around the healing ministry, you can veer off and your whole focus becomes the miraculous and not the Christ himself. The second ministry that I believe will be experienced is the ministry of wealth and abundance. It's true. This wealth transfer that you've heard people say, I believe that God has suspended that dimension for a reason because as a body we are not yet ready for that dimension the our perspectives about kingdom wealth and finance does not warrant God releasing that level of blessings because for many of us our hearts are still corrupt over the idea of money are we together the average person's idea about money is just some kind of um it's just a, a quest to get and buy nice clothes and nice cars and prove that i am successful there is a place for that but if that is the scope of your idea then you do not need any wealth transfer are we together yes so god must first walk upon our hearts it's the same way years ago there was a very strange manifestation of a lot of things that happened in Zaria, angelic feathers, gold dust, silver dust. You know, people started having these strange encounters. And one, I remember one night the Lord told me, said, I'm withdrawing this experience because it's leading to idolatry. It didn't reach one month and that experience was withdrawn. People will go to pray and for hours, all they are doing is checking their hands to see if there's any gold or silver to use it as an evidence to validate spirituality. And God said, no, if I don't take it away, one demon will give it an innocent prayer warrior a feather and he will carry it and idolize it in his room until he begins to mislead another group of people. And so God withdrew that experience. God only releases experiences to people and territories where there is a level of maturity and discernment he knows that when this reality reaches the people they will not abuse it until now as i speak to you there are people who don't understand the purpose of money and it is being abused and so god will not release it until the body is taught the money is safer with bill gates is safer with all of these people than it is with preachers and pastors because they have worked on their minds they are better treasurers for god than us so all it is true that there is a wealth transfer coming but not not some money monger kind of thing it won't come that way anyway i just thought to share that let's look at the ministry of jesus luke chapter 6 i study the gospels a lot because the ministry of jesus inspires me He's the greatest model that I have. And I like, to, I like to study his idea. What did he do? What was captured in his ministry? Luke chapter 6 and verse 17 to 19. Luke chapter 6, verse 17 to 19. This is Jesus now having the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, I'll just read it from here. 
And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of the disciples, a great multitude of people, listen, out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear, now listen carefully, the people came to hear, Amplified says to listen to him, he came to hear him and to be healed. There is a relationship between hearing and being healed. They didn't just come to be healed. They came to hear and to be healed. Verse 18, or still verse 17, to be healed of all their diseases. 18, and they that were vexed with unclean spirits. So we see the kind of people that came for Jesus' meetings. Those who were sick, they were sick, terribly diseased. They came to listen to him. There was something he taught them about listening to his words and the healing power of God. So they came to hear and to be healed. The second category of people we see, they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed. Unclean spirits. The source of their pain and their discomfort were the presence of unclean spirits. And the Bible says, and the whole multitude, listen, sought to touch him. Why? For there went power out of him to heal them. I love the ministry of Jesus. So the Bible tells us why the people got healed. That there was power. Other versions say virtue. There was something that Jesus had that would lead him into the people. And the moment it entered them, they would discover that their sicknesses were gone. Are we together? Hmm. Acts chapter 10, when you read verse 38, Peter was teaching. That was the salvation of the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Listen, it says who went about doing good. Went about doing good went about doing good so we see other things that jesus did that were not captured he didn't just heal the sick alone he didn't just deliver the oppressed alone he went about doing good breakthrough is a good thing restoration is a good thing he went about doing good and then healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him any ministry that wants to reproduce Jesus' ministry. And, and by the way, I hope you know that what we do today is an extension of his ministry. Jesus' ministry did not end with his ascension to heaven. Are we together now? He said, it is expedient that I go. Why? So that the comforter will come. It is to your advantage, advantageous to you that I go. Because my transition will allow the Holy Spirit to come. Like the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha. Now that mantle that was on Jesus, the Spirit himself, without measure, so that we can partake of that Spirit and become an extension of his ministry. We are gathered tonight as proof that the ministry of Jesus has not ended. We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still heals. Do you believe that? We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still delivers. We are gathered tonight because we believe he still does good. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as the Father had sent me. This is Jesus speaking. The Father sent me. I now send you as the Father sent me. Both in terms of the scope of the assignment and the equipping. The Father sent me with power. And every time I spoke, something left me to validate what he said. He said, so also I sent you. You see, if the power of God does not back up his word, it's fraud. It is the power of God that validates the truth, the potency of God's word. So at some point in this service, we should expect the power of God to find expression. Not just in people, you know, receiving impartations here and there, wonderful. But we expect the power of God 
to heal the sick. We expect the power of God to cleanse all kinds of unclean people who are cohabiting with demon spirits that are manipulating their lives and manipulating their results. At some point in this service, we should see the superiority of light over darkness. Is that true? At some point in this service, God should be able to step over your issue to see that that 10 year long issue just dissolves like this, just like that. Is that true? If that happens, then we can say with all sense of gratitude that we are an extension of the ministry of Jesus. But listen to me, brothers and sisters, if this does not happen, we are wasting God's time and we are wasting the time of God's precious people. That's why we prepare for all of the meetings, especially the miracle service. Because you have not just come to watch a man. You have come to see an extension of the ministry of Jesus. You have come with your requests. You have come with your medical reports. You have come with your pain. You have come with all kinds of oppression. You have come with all kinds of closed heaven. And you're saying, Lord, if you are the only one I know who can help me, let me tell you, your coming is faith enough did you hear what i said you're leaving your house to come is faith enough it's true like a patient goes to the hospital once you're in the hospital just leave the rest to the doctor then the doctor begins to prescribe and this is what is happening to us an extension of the ministry of jesus let's look at one scripture mark chapter 1 21 Mark chapter 1 and verse 21. And they went into Capernaum, still the ministry of Jesus, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered the synagogue and taught. It's interesting how Jesus held his crusade. He would take out time, not just to preach, but to teach. Jesus knew that teaching was the system for sustaining anything that the people were to receive. Are we together? If the entire scope of ministry is just miracles alone, it, it becomes volatile. The people receive it and then it just evaporates. But when they are taught, it guides their understanding to keep that which they have received. You can lose something you have received. It's true. You can lose healing. Demons can leave people and re-enter them again. But when the word of God is taught, it gives you the basis are we together now? So Jesus taught in their synagogues. We're reading. It's, it's a long reading. Let's see how far we can go. Just keep, just continue. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. 23. And there was in their synagogue. I love Jesus. See how his miracle service was. As soon as he just finished preaching. It was time to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom. And there was in that service a man with an unclean spirit. And the demons began to cry out, 24, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? We know who you are, the Holy One of God, and so on and so forth. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold your peace and come out of him. This is Jesus for you. This is Jesus for you. Because that man's life was obviously in shambles because there was another spirit that was cohabiting with that individual, manipulating his intentions. And Jesus looked at him. This does not reflect the kingdom. And he brought that spirit out. Like it's going to happen to many people. The forces and the spirits that are responsible for the results we do not want but keep seeing. Until they leave, all these things are a joke. When the unclean spirit had turned him, he cried out in a loud voice and he came out of him. 27, we're reading down to, I think it was 39 or so. I just want us to walk through the ministry of Jesus. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority, he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do obey him. Let me tell you this. When you command an unclean spirit and it goes, it is a big deal. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Doctors can treat sickness. They can cast out devils. Machines 
can show an elongated lung or heart, but it cannot show the spirit sitting there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? These spirits are living entities. They can hear. They have a system and a structure. They were designed to respect some people and disobey some people. Are we together? They understand ranking in the spirit. So when you issue a command, as Jesus did, and these spirits are forced against their will to leave that individual and that habitation is proof of dominion. Are we together? Yes, it is. It truly is proof of dominion. Look at Jesus used this. The people were astonished. They said our priests and rabbis didn't do this. They couldn't do this. I hope you know that while all the priests used to preach, that man was in the temple and the spirits were hearing. But the words were not potent enough to force them to leave. So they kept coming service after service. May you not be a man of God that cohabits with demons. And that people come and sit under your anointing and under your meeting. And the demons that cause poverty, failure, whatever it is, you share the grace and they share the grace with you. And you go out. No, sir. Haba. What then is the excellency of light over darkness? Your presence should discomfort the gate of hell so well that there is no pretending about it. That's why some of you bring people here. You notice you bring them and when they sit down while praise and worship is happening, they want to run away. It's not them. It's not them. The devil knows that when you come into an environment that can bring you emancipation, Satan will revolt and fight and fight again and again. But tonight the devil is a liar. It's too late. Really, it's too late. 28. And immediately his fame spread abroad all through the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Let's see what happened. And Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever. And anon they tell him of her. Now Jesus is healing. We saw him cast out devils. He's about to heal now. And he came and took her by the hand. I love Jesus. And lifted her up. And how, may, how long? Immediately. Immediately. Do you know if Jesus did not touch her, she would remain like that. And you would think it's the will of God. Don't trivialize an anointed hand. Goodness. Jesus walks in and says, I'm introducing something to this woman's body. That until the arrival of that thing, the condition does not change. That contact. The Bible says immediately the fever did what? That means the fever was a living thing. It could move. Abba, is it, are you not intelligent people? The fever left. Pastor Alpha left me. Before Jesus came, the fever was with her. They gave it all kinds of interpretation. Jesus, look at what Jesus did. He didn't talk. He just touched. The Bible didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick and speak. Just by making contact alone are you seeing that now some it was about the transference of virtue and it forced the spirit there was a separation that means the discomfort you feel is because there is something with you are you getting what i'm saying now yes that means that growth that swelling is a sign that there is something with you ah but the hands of jesus extended through us you see that I, I'm, I'm creating expectation in you that means that pile would never have been piled until a spirit came in partnership with your body and just saying pile go is not what will, will make it go there is an agency that will separate you from that pile you will call it a miracle there is no reason to remain sick when the spirit has been separated look at it immediately not slowly so the question is not whether you can be healed the question is whether the anointing is sufficient to separate that spirit because when it happens the bible says immediately and she was so healed she went straight to the kitchen 
straight to the kitchen from a bed. And he came and took her by the hand and brought unto him all that were there at even when the sun did set. Like Koinonia now, they brought unto him. That means there was an information that had reached town. That when we bring certain people to this man, there was something about him that was able to heal them. They brought unto him all that were what? Diseased. And them that were possessed with devils. See the kind of people that came to Jesus. As a man of God, if these kinds of people are not coming to you, it's not the issue of I'm not called into this ministry. Something is wrong. Because they should discern that the hand of God upon your life should function in a pattern similar to that of Jesus and should make them bring certain people. There are, there are creative dimensions that his anointing can bring. Creation is needed when there is no possibility of having that reality again. Then you create it. Not everyone may be sick, but let me tell you something. Everyone needs the hand of God. There are some of us, our heavens are closed totally. And don't act as if it's not important. Nobody is favoring you. No open door. You are born again, but your life and your door and destiny is closed. Can you trust God to open this door for you? It's not by might. It's not by power. You heard the testimony of, of uh, Joy. She said an uncle who does not even call her. Something made that uncle call, brothers and sisters. Because that uncle also has relatives somewhere. Everybody who blesses you has someone in need around him. What makes him to leave them and come to you? No. Are we blessed? One question I'll ask you and then we'll begin to pray. Are you truly tired of the situation? You see, there's something I think I was sharing with. I can't remember who I was sharing this with. I was saying pain. It was you, Jimmy. Pain is very important. Sometimes the only way to let people see your is allow that pain. Don't stop it. Because there are people, if you have not been pushed to the wall, you will not see the need for God. For as long as there is somebody answering your prayer for you, you will not see the need to be serious. So sometimes God deliberately allows it. And that pain... The day five of your children said, Daddy, is this how we'll continue? You just get up and say, I'm coming for Koinonia today. I'm, I'm tired of this. That pain was an indication that something is wrong. And that it needs remedy fast. Pain. There are people who will never run and come to God. But you just press one side of your stomach. And you just feel, ah, something is growing. What is this? Next week, the thing increased. You told a doctor, just touch it and say, ah, I don't want to tell you the name. Pain. Just say, when is that miracle service said? The power of God is real. It can produce miracles. It will produce miracles in your life tonight. Do you believe it? I expect that not only would God heal the sick, not only will he cast out devils, listen carefully, I expect that tonight, by his spirit, he will lift you out of certain captivities, lack of favor, delay. There are some of us who are trusting God to return certain things that left your life for years. Whoever told you it cannot, you heard the lady that said they stole her phone, they came with machete and stole her phone. I remember she sent me a text. That they came to carry a machete. Foolish thieves. They don't know that a body without a spirit is dead. The same way you have been carrying a certificate. That's the body. Where is the spirit component? That's why you drop it on a table and they throw it in a dustbin. But when the spirit component comes, let me tell you this. God never designed a man to do anything on earth unassisted. A spirit entity must assist you. Even you, if you meet a herbalist, that herbalist is not alone. There is a spirit assisting him. You see that? Yes. 
don't walk through life by your strength and power please help them life will be too hard for you this is the mystery of hardship rejecting the assistance of the spirit I would dare not do ministry without the spirit what else will I be doing but with God with God all things without him you are on your own but when you involve him and not only involve him go a step further by letting him lead the way then your life becomes a wonder I'm showing you many of you are surprised the same surprise was in the Bible they were astonished what manner of man is this astonished and then the man if he's wise will tell you look I'm not alone Jesus said, I'm not alone. All these miracles you see, I'm being assisted. Brothers and sisters, the result you see in this ministry is a product of assistance. The realm of the spirit is in partnership. You can't be standing here and someone is shouting outside, shouting at overflow. No, no. Habba. Words are not hammer. But when the spirit is upon them, that word will enter you like a drug. And all of a sudden, you will find out that certain things will go. <laughs> It will work in Zaria, it will work in Lagos, it will work in London, it will work in Saudi Arabia, it will work everywhere. Are we together? Mm. The spirits that oppress us must give way. I'm, gi I'm taking out time to charge your heart like this because I want you to receive. The most important thing is not the ministrations as it were. The most important thing is creating this expectation. Many of us come and we are just hoping um, okay, God, I know you will bless me. In the name of Jesus, may God lift you. Amen. I just, well, it was a nice service. And you go back and nothing happens. You keep watching people come to testify. Blessed is she that believes, the Bible says, for unto her, not unto them, there shall be a performance. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord. I came here full of the Holy Ghost and I came here believing with all my heart. You are sick get ready to be healed don't 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 say well let's watch and see get ready to be healed you are oppressed of the devil you may not even know you're oppressed you just know that nothing is working in your life i want you to be tired and say god will you bring me here so especially for those of you who came so far lord will you carry me and bring me here and take me back like that there are some of you in ministry you came to contact fire lord will you leave me will i leave my members my fellowship and come back here and go back no evidence of favor i believe him i believe that he's a mighty man i believe he's awesome i have seen his hand i have seen his power and ladies and gentlemen i present to you the same god yesterday today forever i present to you the same healer yesterday today forever i present to you the same deliverer i present to you the one who took joseph from the prison overnight i present to you the one who turned saul to the apostle i present to you the one who turned rahab to be part of the genealogy of Jesus I present to you your destiny changer I present to you your destiny maker I present to you the anointer of men the one who puts oil upon the head of ordinary people and changes their life I present to you the prosperer the one who can program a climate of favor over a man as though you are holding a child I present to you the one who can give you influence, can lift you from nothing and make your life a wonder, a specimen, an epistle of his hand. That's the God I present to you. I have given a very nice speech. We're about to step back and allow the king of glory ride over this place and let me watch the mountain that stands before him. Let me watch Zerubbabel. Oh, no, no. He said, who art thou mountain? Who art thou mountain? Who art thou infirmity? Who art thou delay? Who art thou stagnation? Before Zerubbabel. 
He said, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made plain. your hands I want to pray the Lord is starting tonight with an impartation there is an impartation of the grace for favor this is what the Lord is telling me the grace for favor the grace I'm about to pray for favor Favor is a revelation that God has given me. My life is a testimony of that reality. I want to pray for you now. Believe. Believe as I pray. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare right now. Father, even as you have revealed to me, from this main auditorium to overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, and those online Lord I release an impartation for the grace for favor receive it right now in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus I stretch my right hand and I decree and declare step into a new level of favor step into a new level of favor Step into a new level of favor. 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 We need favor in our lives. Most of the things we pray about are under the office of favor to solve. I say it again. In the name of Jesus, every challenge in your life that only the favor of God can solve. I stand before the God who has helped me and has helped this ministry. I release upon you an oil of favor. Take it now. In the name of Jesus, take favor. Take favor. Receive favor in the name of Jesus Christ. A strange dimension of favor favor that will surprise you favor that will accelerate your life when a life listen to me when a life has no favor it is clear the proof of lack of favor is the absence of helpers in your life not the absence of money you can have money you can have intellect you can have a job but when there are no men in your life you don't have favor the proof of favor is not the coming of money the proof of favor is the rapid response from men to attend to the issues of your life in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that the man that must show up in your life to validate the grace for favor, I prophesy them upon you now. I call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus upon your business, upon your job, upon your projects. May men arise to help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is the grace for favor. Those of you who are on the social media may have heard of a testimony that had been trending for a while. I traveled to Lagos last week and just when we got down from the aircraft on my way going, listen carefully, something is happening here. A young man just walked to me and held me and I looked at him and he said, sir, remember me? I said, well, I don't remember you. What's the story? 
he came here, Koinonia, with a property, his property, and carried it and gave me as a seed. I said, what for? I mean, you're a young man. What will you go and tell your wife? Brothers and sisters, from November till now, nine properties and one estate came to him. A young guy. Abba. Is it charm? What is on you is what brings things to your life. It's not what you want. It is what is on you. In the name of Jesus, that anointing that must come on you, I declare that it comes on your head right now. It comes upon your head right now, producing strange results. It comes upon your head right now. It comes upon your head right now. Just follow me. Some of you don't know how you need favor. You know you need favor, but you don't know what extent. I can't imagine that there are human beings that live on this earth without favor. You will never be able to be happy on earth. No. I can you check. Let's check our lives. The truth is for many of us, there is no favor. It's not that the helpers are not there. There has to be something on you to bring them. Every lifting that God has brought by his grace happened in this Zaria, not London. Zaria, here. Many of us live unrewarded lives because there is nothing on you drawing men to bless you. Nobody thinks about you. God does not talk to anybody about you. A gentleman, I think one of these, uh, I can't remember one of these Fridays, and he stood to see me after the service, and he said, man of God, my life is hard. Can you help me with some money? And I looked at him, I said, you are not a wise gentleman. I know you need money now, but you should ask yourself, the person giving you the money, where did it come from? The wiser prayer is for favor. I said, let's do an experiment. I told him, I said, I will pray for you for favor. Return next Friday and tell me what happened. If nothing happens, I will give you money. Agreed? He said, yes. And I prayed for him and he went. Brothers and sisters, on Monday, Monday, that's the Monday after, that gentleman sent me a text. And he said, his uncle, that he's even fighting with their father, that he did a very serious transfer and told him that who helps you in school? And he said, nobody. He said, so why have you not been reaching me? All of you, these proud children and so on and so forth, that he was going to start sending him money. I said, you, you believe that that uncle just did it by his will? Listen, this world is too wicked for somebody to just like you. That's flattery. This wicked world where a man can slaughter a child's head then what makes you believe they will just like you? Enough to see that you rise. It takes favor. Can I pray that prayer for you again? In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, you have done your best. You have done your efforts. You have struggled. It's almost killing you now. Receive the grace for favor. Receive the grace for favor. May your life change by favor. Receive the grace for favor. Hallelujah. It is favor that brings resources. It is favor that brings opportunity. There are many gifted people. There's no one to reward them. There are many nice people, many wonderful musicians, nobody to place a demand on their grace. It's so annoying when you see someone you are better than, but he has favor and you don't. And yet you have to say yes, sir. Her man did not think Mordecai was good enough, but favor. And he said, everywhere you see the chariots of Mordecai, bow the knee, Mordecai is passing. Yes, a gatekeeper. You may not like a person, but when favor is on them, it will veto whatever you think. I pray for you again. Every door that must open in this season to 
invalidate favor. I command it to be open now. I command it to be open now. Listen. You're not going to build a house by savings. Let me tell you the truth. It's not in today's Nigeria. You're not going to buy a car by saving. No. I practice all these things. You're not going to, to settle and train your children just by saving money. You will need a grace that can accelerate your results. Otherwise, you will never be a giver. You will never. You can't be a giver just by saving peanuts, 10 naira and 100 naira. When there is a demand, life will demand so much from you that if you are not operating under favor, you will be frustrated. And that's how Satan wants to trap men. He will trap you and make your life miserable. Let's release this favor on our families. You have received it for yourself, but let it get to your family. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. My father, every family that is represented here by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, let there be a release of favor. Let there be a release of favor. Favor on every family. Favor on every family. Listen. Sometimes, eh? It is not warfare that destroys. It is even how favor works. Favor can kill to make sure that one person rises. Some of these proud relatives that make fraternities with darkness and sit upon the destinies of families and make ghosts and say for as long as we are there, you must route your success through us. If you attempt to rise without us, you will not rise. I declare that the sword of favor may it get to every family and dislodge everybody who wants to be God in that family. Hallelujah. Favor. In one minute, I want you to begin to mention all the areas you want to see favor and speak. Lift your voice. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Participate. Lord, I release favor concerning this job. Pray. I release favor. I release favor. Favor concerning my building project. I release favor. Are you praying? Favor. You surround us with favor like a shield. You surround us with favor like a shield. like a sheep. Favor in my academics, pray. Favor over my job. Lord, favor, favor, favor. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you the truth. You see, Ba, this prayer you are praying, if this prayer is truly answered in your life, this is how you will stand. What is this? This favor prayer you see, there are people who have touched of this favor. They can tell you. Favor is fearful in its operation. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they carry the crippled man I don't deserve the palace he says still come and the king said you will sit here and eat with me let me tell you how you know it is favor listen favor is not one time when somebody just says hey, Jimmy, I want to give you water what, that's just goodness favor is I want to keep blessing you I want to continue doing this 
many of us what happens is that we mistaken goodness for favor someone just appear once and just says look i want to help you and it never happens again when it is favor a process is ignited it keeps following like that it's true study the things in your life you'll be able to separate goodness from favor there are things that just happen one time but favor favor continues so i'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because the lord wants to bless the works of our hands listen whether you're on a job or whatever it is you see these hands you see they are it's a mystery it says the the hand of god it was with this hand god made man are we together now this hand you see is a symbol of your productivity and if it is not blessed it will bring struggle to you i want to pray I'm, I'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because for many of us who are getting results but our results are too small i stretch these hands the fire that the lord put upon this hand in the name of jesus i release it let it come upon your hands let it come upon your hands representing your job your academics your business whatever it is that you're involved in i release i stretch my hands may that may that fire come upon you in the name of jesus christ you go back with that hand and write a proposal and it will shock you what will happen you go back with that hand listen listen believe this and pick up a document and submit and someone collects it and is under the influence of what your hand brought it's true it's true why does god do these things to give us rest so we can serve him why does god open doors to give you rest financial frustration and all kinds of related frustrations are strategies from satan to distract you and make you to keep seeking things you never will truly be able to seek god when certain things have not been solved in your life it's true you can't give god your best when you are still thinking of what to eat you are thinking of what to wear but when God takes those things away, your prayer life becomes worship, not just hours of petition in the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overflow 2. There's someone, the anointing of the Spirit is coming on someone, overflow 2, the overflow by the roadside. Bring the lady. Hello, him Adonai. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Overflow to the overflow by the road. Please, quickly. We have to hurry up. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, Can I talk to you, madam? This woman, please tap her for me. Come. Hello, him there is a spirit that doesn't want this woman to rise. Hello, him Thy kingdom come, thy will be. The Lord is opening the eyes of your parents. I'm seeing the Lord opening their eyes to a realization of something the devil has been using. In the name of Jesus, especially for this lady, I command it so now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ that every conspiracy of darkness over you and your family is hereby crushed to pieces in the name of Jesus madam I don't know who you are but let me pray for you there is a spirit I look at you and I see a woman who should be walking in certain realms of favor you love the Lord but this is like it's like a trap you just cannot move and make progress and the Lord is saying I should pray for you as I pray for you madam you will be surprised to see what happens in your life hold my hands father in the name of Jesus Christ I release this woman in the name of Jesus Christ I release this woman right now in the name of Jesus Christ I release this woman the devil has put something in this lady's stomach this lady you are holding I command in the name of Jesus remove that evil you have put now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm about to pray and I'm already seeing a vision of what will happen there will be such a massive 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 deliverance now let it not surprise you I've explained to you what this thing is it's a separation you should rejoice when it happens because it means that you are entering a new season 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 a new season, a new season. A new season. Someone is entering it right now. A new season. A new season. Young lady, you are entering a new season. A new season by the Spirit. A new season. 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 Something is breaking. Breaking. I don't need to walk everywhere. I'm just walking as the Holy Ghost is leading me. A new season. Something is breaking. 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 A new season. There is a cloud of glory. There is a cloud of glory. A new season. No force can stand it in your life. There is an anointing here. There is an anointing here. A new season. Something is breaking here. Right now in the name of Jesus. Something is breaking here in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, receive it. Something is leaving you. Something is leaving you. It must go. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, shake it, take it, take it, and take it. New season, new season. I stretch my hand. Something is breaking here. There's someone an anointing is coming on you, breaking a limitation right now. In the name of Jesus. that spirit leave that lady now in the name of Jesus command 
every force every spirit I'm going to pray for you listen listen as I pray for you listen it doesn't matter where you are provided there is a spirit entity that is waging war in your life let me tell you the truth by the God whom I serve as I make this declaration the words will live like a sword from me and it will come and create that separation I want you to bring them out overflow one two three wherever in the mighty name of Jesus the God of Jeshurun I decree and declare that every force sitting on your destiny as you count three as you count Jesus at the count of three let there be deliverance one two three let them go now let them go now witchcraft manipulations of darkness in the name of Jesus I command a separation through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit I decree I set it as an ordinance in the spirit I announce liberty liberty bring them out I'm still praying. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family that has been covenanted to any elements of the supernatural, whether the earth, whether fire, that people pass through fire to make ordinances at the count of three, I command those ordinances set on fire. One, two, three. Let there be liberation right now. Every family covenanted to the waters, covenanted to the air, to trees. I set you free now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a map and I'm seeing all your state. All your state. This is the hand of God. The sword of the spirit going to all your state. Bringing deliverance. There are times that God moves this way. In the name of Jesus I command. Whoever is from that region. May the power of God begin to touch you now. May the power of God begin to touch you now. Complete liberty. Complete liberty. Complete liberty. Overflow three. Please lift your hands. Just watch your screen and lift your hands. Overflow three. Don't worry. You, you, they, you, you don't have to bring them. The distance is far. Overflow three. Just look at me. I see the angels of the Lord doing something there. At the count of three. Overflow three. I want you to shout the name Jesus. Because I'm seeing swords. That's what I'm seeing. And the Lord is bringing a massive, massive breakthrough. Massive deliverance. In the name of the Lord Jesus, overflow three, are you ready? I'm seeing chains of stagnation about to leave you. Right now in the name of Jesus, everyone under any kind of oppression, 
at the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three. Supernatural liberty. Supernatural liberty. An outpouring of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. Hold on, guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Please, I want to pray. The Lord is showing me something that is very interesting. The Lord wants to break cycles. There are people, every season, certain things happen. Every September, somebody must die. Every three, three years, somebody married must divorce. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. You don't have to ask whether or not you are involved. Don't worry, the anointing will look for you. I decree and declare right now. In the name of Jesus, the power that activates cycles, demonic cycles over the lives of people, so that certain patterns and events keep repeating themselves. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Call that lady back. That lady. Lift your hands, my dear. God is not done with you. I look at you and I see oppression. There is something that the devil has put in you. If I don't pray for you, very soon they will start telling you, you will start feeling pain. They will say fibroid. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. I command that devil, let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every cycle over anyone's life. Are you ready to shout Jesus now? At the count of three to surprise you what God will do. One. Two. Get ready. Three. The chain of sex. Cycles be broken. Cycles, cycles of failure, cycles of miscarriages, cycles of unfruitfulness by the sound of the Spirit be broken now. Hallelujah! Be broken now. I want to pray. Um, please, this man, I don't know who the, this man, yes, please quickly, we are soon going to pray for the sick, I may not have time to prophesy to individuals, I'm standing near this lady and I'm seeing a snake, this is what I see in the name of Jesus, I curse that devil, I'm not seeing a human being, I'm seeing a snake, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. overflow one I'm seeing the power of God this I just mentioned snake and I was seeing serpents just moving at overflow one right now I'm seeing it's like a sword dividing those snakes that's what I'm seeing it's happening to people at overflow one in the name of Jesus let it be over now snakes and scorpions the mystery the mystery of snakes and scorpions he said I give you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy sir i want to pray for you i don't know whether you came here for us you have been but, coming here uh, but i was tra i traveled before that so i have not been coming i want to pray for you yes sir if i don't pray for you the devil is going to kill you i'm looking at you and i'm seeing you inside a coffin they have already closed you i'm not a prophet of doom i want to pray for you you love jesus be careful so that they don't bring these herbal things for you. Huh? Yes, uh, is that true? Yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing them bring something for you to yes. help you. Yes, sir. That thing is a charm. Yes, it's sir. not half it's charm. Yes. Native yes. doctor. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, That's sir. what will even kill you. Yes, sir. It's not going to solve your problem. Yes, sir. The people doing it are well meaning. Yes, sir. But the truth is that they are going to kill you for nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Because you are not even responding to it the way they say you should respond to it. Yes, and you violate it will destroy you. Yes, sir. Can I pray for you? You have, you have taken something in your system now that will even destroy you. Listen, let me tell you. When you are pressed, we are humans and we can be pressed to the world. Going to the devil to get a charm is, is you are facilitating your destruction. If Satan gives you tea here, he will hold a knife and stab you at the back. Father, by the mercy of God, I pray for this man. Let him not die. In the name of Jesus. 
I close the gate of the grave over your life in the name of Jesus. Both the herbalist and the conveyor of those charms, in the name of Jesus, we scatter that shrine into pieces. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you, sir. The Lord perfects you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Something is leaving this lady. Oh dear, she's vomiting. I'm looking at her and I'm seeing something. Agnes. God is not done with that guy or that young man with blue. Please, if you are not Agnes, don't come here. Please. Your name is Agnes. Where are you from? I need to pray for you. I'm seeing an attack on your life. This attack is coming from Calabar. Huh? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, I have to pray for you. Where are you from? Cross River. You are from Cross River? Yes, sir. Come. I must pray for you. Kai, there is somebody the Lord is setting the person free. I'm seeing a friend going to a herbalist and they are asking the friend to give somebody and they wrote the name of that person. You are here now in the name that is above all names. I'm serious, don't think I'm just hyping you. In the name of Jesus, whoever's name has been written by any demonic friend or whatever herbalist in the name of Jesus because that person you keep seeing dead, dead people you even saw yourself in a coffin in the name of Jesus I curse that spirit now I'm going to pray for you and then we are going to pray for the sick right now ah. There is some serious deliverance. I'm, I'm seeing something happening in the realm of the spirit. This is, this is, this is a serious. Father, let this lady be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, you, this lady, come. You love Jesus? Huh? Yes, sir. Come. You... I'm not condemning you, eh? Look at me. You have to be very serious with God. One, two, friends. Look at me. God has delivered you many times. You would have destroyed yourself, eh? You're a small girl. You need to love God with all your heart. Please, be very careful so you don't go and put yourself in something that will destroy you. I love you, eh? I love you and that's why I'm telling you this. You need, you need somebody to counsel you and follow you up. Hmm? I'm not going to say everything I'm seeing, but you have to be careful. Because it's God that saved you now. I'm seeing something, a virus. Anyway, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for your daughter. Help her by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I'm standing and I'm seeing a tree. And that tree is this lady. And something that was planted and the Lord is saying uproot it I uproot this thing now in the name of Jesus Christ I uproot it now the Spirit of the Lord is taking me to Benway State I've never been there physically but I'm seeing Benway Benway and I'm looking and I'm seeing like a tractor pushing trees down it's like there is a covenant that has to do with trees in the name of Jesus Christ if there is any family involved in this I command and uprooting every tree that has not been planted help them by my father every tree I see Benway State in the mighty name of Jesus let there be an uprooting an uprooting an uprooting and uprooting in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you, my dear. You are a nice lady, but there's bad luck in your life. Very bad luck. And the Lord wants to help you. Father, help your daughter. 
in the name of Jesus Christ bad luck be gone now and forever in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord help you come my dear let me pray for you I'm about to pray for the sick now our time is gone in the name of Jesus Christ there are some my spirit is heavy to prophesy but because we have to I want us to pray for the sick so that I can just make those declarations we may not have time for one-on-one -on -one prophecy but I'm telling you God wants to touch touch a lot of people my dear I want to pray for you in Jesus name the Lord is rolling away the reproach in your family rolling away the reproach in your family in the name of Jesus my dear look at me you are entering a new level of lifting you that's what I'm praying for you for I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head and the Lord is saying I should tell you that is a new level of lifting you this lady looking at me I prophesy it over your life in the name of Jesus Christ who is this who Agnes Agnes where is she Abuja. Abuja, sir. your sister yes father in the name of Jesus I pray for this lady where is she Abuja, sir. she loves Jesus yes, sir. in the name of Jesus Christ pray that no man will come into her life and destroy her eh? in the name of is she married huh? in no. the name of uh, whatever it is in the name of Jesus Christ may God help you mama come let me pray for you it's your season of breakthrough come is this your child come boy come I'm looking at this boy and I'm seeing that God is going to use him this is a small boy boy how are you the, the boy doesn't even know but I'm going to pray for him Samuel did not know that he will become a great prophet one day when Eli he was just an innocent boy I'm going to pray for him mama please stand up I will pray for you look at me ma please don't be embarrassed but the Lord is saying he wants to take suffering from your life this thing they call in house wahala God wants to take it from your life you are a very sincere woman that loves the Lord but this this cause of hardship um, this woman loves the Lord with all her heart father you what's what's the name of this boy Reba, huh? lifted okay. your name is lifted yes father I lay hands on lifted in the name of Jesus Christ use him mightily we are all products of your grace lift him and use him mightily in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ mama I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ and I'm telling you this the month of April is your month of strange breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ the month of April is your month of breakthrough Azuka come leave the camera first let me pray for you and then you keep the camera I want to pray for you because I'm seeing a big project coming for you and this project is going to lift you this is something that has to do with your snapshot but God is bringing someone it's been something you have desired that God will bring someone to open a door and truth you have been faithful you have even been serving in this house but I want to pray for you Lord in the name of Jesus Christ lift him take him to that dimension of grace I release that anointing upon you it will no longer be an ordinary camera I call forth men that will lift you I command it so I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ open doors for you open doors for you in the name of Jesus Christ come this lady um, Sarah come there is witchcraft in your family I have to pray for you this thing is affecting everybody in the family everybody everybody not there's no exception everybody Lord take away this plague of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ wonderful people beautiful ladies but all kinds of trouble from the pit of hell in the name of Jesus Christ I silence the voice of the accuser I silence the voice of the accuser I silence the voice of the accuser in the name of Jesus Christ we are going to pray for the sick now listen 
I know that there are a number of people who came here sick and a number of you have come trusting God for healing and miracle. Let me pray for this lady. How many of you have your prayer request? Now lift it up, ushers, your prayer request. Those online, make sure we collect it. This, this lady, let me have her hands. Lord Jesus, let this trap of darkness over this family represented by this lady give way now in the name of Jesus Christ. Just hold her gently. She'll be fine. Submit your prayer request quickly. Now, we are going to pray for the sick. Don't allow any nonsense remain in your body, no matter how small. Make sure you insist that it leaves. Make sure you insist that it leaves. We are going to be very fast. Please, we'll be very fast. Now, let me say this. When you stand to receive healing, don't just stand and be staring as if you are sleeping. Let your heart be open. Are we together? Number two, accept whoever is praying for you, ask you what is wrong. You don't have to say, okay, it is my ears or my... Don't worry. Don't worry. The people praying for you have been trained and the anointing of the Spirit will touch you. It doesn't matter what auditorium. It's a corporate grace that is working here. Hallelujah. And for all of us who are seated whilst this is happening, make sure you are praying. Because I'm, I'm literally sensing as if I want to throw up. It's the spirit of prophecy. There's, there's something that the Lord is putting in my spirit to release. And that's why I want to pray for the sick quickly. So that we will pray this prophecy. If we do this, I'm satisfied in this service. We have to be very fast so that we'll conserve time. Hallelujah. Jesus. Someone please help with collecting the request. Make sure that even those at the extremes of the road... Their requests are collected. Please, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. By the ministry of the Spirit. Several people serving as contact points. But we pray that your power and your life will touch the sick. Lord, your people have come. Some of them with incurable diseases. Some of them with all kinds of devils. I decree and declare that your anointing will prevail over every challenge. Let your people return with testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Please be seated while you pray for a while as we pray for these people. Pray, spiritualize yourself. Make sure that you are submitting your request and make sure you are praying. Thank you, Jesus. My beautifier, you have taken away the shame, taken away the pain. You make my life so beautiful. My beautifier, you have taken away the shame, taken away the pain. You make me just like you. My beautifier, my beautifier you have taken away, taking away the shame, taking away the pain. Thank you. 
Let's conserve time. It's time to pray for the requests. God answers prayers in this place. I want you to believe. Stretch your hands here and begin to pray in the spirit. Stretch your hands here. Begin to pray in the spirit. Please make sure, make sure everyone's request is here. In the name of Jesus. received all kinds of awe-inspiring testimonies, testaments of your life, your power, your might, your faithfulness. Lord, in this month of February, we look to you again to surprise us. Lord, represented here are the requests of people from several nations of the world and several across this nation. In the name of Jesus, Joshua Selman cannot answer any man's prayer. So Lord, I transfer the trust of your people to you. The one who is able to meet every need. And on the strength of the grace that only comes from you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. The resurrected lamb. The one who is most victorious. I prophesy and I turn every request here. To become a testimony in the name of Jesus. Lord, as I walk through these requests, in the name of Jesus, that is exactly how your people walk through every challenge. Every challenge, every challenge. No matter what it is, I decree and declare that the grace to triumph above it is released. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. No no matter what it is, no matter what it is, provided it found its way here, in the name of Jesus Christ, the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that receives the testimony. The same hand that wrote it is the same hand that will receive the testimony. There are people who need to lack sleep for these prayers to be answered. May they lack the sleep. There are people who need to be promoted for this prayer to be answered. May they be promoted. There are agents of darkness that must be laid to rest for these prayers to be answered. May they be laid to rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. If they are still praying for you in any of the overflows, don't worry. You can just connect with them while I pray for you. By the grace of God, you will not write your request twice. I thought I was done, but I just felt drawn again to it. Whatever it is that you wrote here that requires a creative miracle, that means the solution is not currently in existence anywhere. May the one who created the heavens and the earth create your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. As long as God grants me the grace, I will never stop prophesying over you. It is the greatest thing. I think I can do. If I give a word of knowledge because I'm limited by time and I'm limited by my own understanding, 
and my level of alignment to God, I may not be able to accurately address everyone. But when it comes to prophecy, everyone can receive. Are we together now? Wherever you are, you can receive. You've heard the testimonies. You've seen the things that happen. The Bible says everyone who speaks, let him speak according to the measure of grace. There are some things this anointing can do. And let's trust God that it happens in your life. Let's pray. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that for everyone here who started this year in tears already, that from January, February, you've not known joy. I declare that as this week ends, that's how your trouble and your sorrow ends too. Bible says no weeping endures for a night it says but joy comes with the morning I decree and declare the kind of testimony that will make you get down on your knees and say Lord I've seen you bless me but not this dimension may the God I serve release it to you anyone here jobless or trusting God for a better job. In the name of Jesus, between now and March miracle service, return with your miracle job. Return with your miracle job. Return with your miracle job. Anyone here due for promotion? And whether based on tribal sentiments or whatever it is, you've been kept at a level. In the name of Jesus, I open the doors for you. Rise to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every manifestation of delay in your life. Others move forward, but when it gets to your turn, something just clamps you in one position. Or slow progress. Slow progress is as destructive as delay. I command speed to your life. I speak speed to your life. I prophesy speed to your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare every advantage that the enemy has over your life. In the name of Jesus, this is the season where all those doors are closed forever. I pray for those in business here. I speak over it. The grace for multiplication, let it come upon your business. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for those who are trusting God to correct certain things in their lives. It may be results for students. It may be something. It may be a mistake of the past. You've seen God correct things in strange ways here. I command supernatural correction for you. For every student here, that the result you are holding is not your real result. I don't care how long. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, we correct it right here. Anyone here involved in any kind of project, building project, whatever major project, you or your loved ones, I decree and declare the finisher's anointing comes upon that project. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray over your finances. Listen, let me tell you this. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. He said, believe in his prophets so shall you prosper if you truly believe God will surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you I give you two weeks from today in the name of Jesus Christ that between now and the next 14 days let something notable happen to your finances listen I don't want you to think as I'm praying, you are thinking, oh, God will use A, B. Leave whoever God will use to him. I'm not talking business. 
in the name of Jesus I say it again between now and the next 14 days may the lifter of men surprise you in your finances hallelujah every gift of the spirit that you had once seen in your life and for some reason is either depleting in the grace for dispensing it or not there again I prophesy supernatural activation right now supernatural activation right now the supernatural grace for soul winning drawing people to God a strange grace that will not give you peace until people are coming to Jesus through you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you take that grace now the grace to validate signs and wonders that through your hand listen not just through Joshua Selman in the name of Jesus those hands that are stretched towards me I prophesy to you the unction to walk in strange miracles receive it in the name of Jesus the grace to reproduce the miracles in this house I release that grace young and old male or female receive it in the name of Jesus I speak over your life that as you utter words concerning the destinies of men you will watch them come to pass with your very eyes in the name of Jesus Christ whoever needs to make peace with you I decree and declare the grace of God compels them to make peace with you hallelujah whoever has been directed by God to bless you and the devil is stopping them from obeying God is not necessarily financial it may be to bless you with an information access opportunity whoever is supposed to bless and lift you and in the name of Jesus the devil wants to stop them I clear the way for your contact with them in the name of Jesus anyone here who needs an urgent breakthrough maybe something that has to do with house rent or maybe something that involves the police just something that if God does not intervene the embarrassment is going to be serious I pray that between now and Sunday the God that I serve you may not see the wind you may not see the rain but brothers and sisters may my God step in and surprise you We're rounding up. Whatever has covered the glory of God upon your face so that people cannot see and partake of that grace and also reward you, I tread that veil into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I pray for any and everyone here suffering from any kind of barrenness in the name of Jesus Christ by next miracle service you come back pregnant I say it again by next by next month miracle service you return with your baby in your womb in the name of Jesus the spirit that makes you see what you want but never hold it is close to you you see it they promise you and say by tomorrow I will do something then in the night something happens in the name of Jesus everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand hallelujah finally I call your destiny helpers from the north the south the east the west whether they are in this country or outside this country I don't know how God will make them meet you 
but I declare they must meet you in the name of Jesus. They will not only meet you, they will bless you in the name of Jesus. They will not only bless you, they will continue blessing you. I multiplied dreams and visions and encounters in your life. Whatever has choked away your prayer life. You used to pray for two, three, four, five hours. Now you pray for 10, 15 minutes. You are drowsy, you are tired. It's an attack. It is an attack. It is the devil. You used to be consistent. But right now you wake up in the night. You pray for 10 minutes. You are snoring back. In the name of Jesus, tonight, let there be revival upon your prayer life. Revival over your prayer life. The appetite to study the word. You once had it, but it went away. And for some of you, you've not read your Bible since last Friday. It's not that you don't want to. The grace to make it happen is no longer there. I command tonight, may that fire for the word come upon you. Hallelujah. For all your loved ones who are connected to you, whether they are born again or not, because you came here tonight, I stretch my hand. May the grace and the blessing that came to you, may it get to them too. In the name of Jesus Christ, give Jesus a clap. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video.